Hello and welcome back to the MPTV 709 Coach or So. Ryan Lindley, Eric Myers here bringing you another great look at Morton Potter Sports as, uh, over the past week or so. So, Coach, we had a very rainy, interesting grass field. Freshman game gets canceled. Big football game at Pekin last Friday night. Yeah, 42-14 uh, winners. Potters moved to 5-0. and oh. It was an interesting day, though, like you mentioned. It rained right before the game. Like, really, I mean, yeah. game time was 7.30. It rained, I think, from about 5.30 till about 7, so like 90 minutes of rain. Not to mention the day before, yeah. all morning. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, the field was slick. I mean, I think, you know, there were moments of the game that people were getting very frustrated, and I think people sometimes forget Number one, the weather makes a big impact on football. Number two, weather makes an even bigger impact on football when it's on natural grass as opposed to on the turf. So I think the 42-14 win that, yeah, there were some moments of frustration, but I think you take away a victory that gets you to 5-0 and against a Pekin team that's another middle line I foe, so you also remain undefeated in the middle line I at 3-0, and and you start looking ahead a little bit. And, you know, you normally never want to do that, but now that you're officially playoff qualified with five wins, I think it's okay to, don't glance too far ahead, but at least start to maybe look at some of those projections and think about like what could this be with two more wins, with three more wins, with four more wins. And those are things that are happening. For those of you who don't know, it's homecoming week right here. So we have a big homecoming game uh, tomorrow night versus Limestone over here at Carpet Field, 7.30 p.m. Obviously, NFHS Network, you can watch from afar if you don't want to come, but it's going to be a great one. So what are we looking forward to in this Limestone game? You know, the Peking game, we learned some things, did try some different things. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but... What do we look forward to? You talk about looking forward, playoff eligible, all these big fancy words. Yeah. They still have four games left. Yeah, I mean, Limestone I mean, Limestone is a team that's struggled so far this year. Um, they've, they've got one conference win, BD Spioria, uh, who has also struggled this year, although has we more... We play in two weeks. Yeah, we play in two weeks, and actually has more overall wins, but nonetheless, uh, the re reality of it is that Limestone's strength is in their passing game, but in totality, they are not as strong as Pekin, as Metamora, as Rochelle, or Muhammad, right? I mean, so if you start to look about what you're going to do with this team, team, you want to obviously, number one, go out and win the game, right? I mean, that's still goal number one, no matter what. But, you know, if you're looking at goals two and three, it's maximizing certain players, maybe, guys that need to get a little more, get a few more reps, try to get the ball in their hands a few more times. Maybe it's putting some different formations on tape for your Dunlaps and your Washingtons. They're going to scout out that game, and, you know, now they have to spend time in practice preparing in, in a different way. So there are a few things you want to do, but at the end of the day, right, Goal number one is to win. The sixth win is significant. We talk about being playoff eligible. Six wins makes you officially clinched in the playoffs. So maybe that's the biggest goal for this week. I mean, goals are always out there, as we talked about time and time again. I think something you mentioned really much is you know, getting to try different things. So when I had the opportunity this morning to sit down with Coach Zoss, Ben Zoss, our offensive coordinator for the Potters, and we talked a little bit about this in the interview. So let's go talk about our conversation that we had this morning with Coach Zoss. All right, well, welcome back to the BTV Coaches Show. Eric Myers, Coach Zoss here, offensive coordinator for the Morton Hogs. And right now the Hogs are rolling, Coach. So tell me a little bit about how the season's going so far. Um, really pleased so far. Um, kids have played well. 5-0, um, and oh, you can't do better than that. I mean, that sounds ridiculous, but you can't be better than 5-0. Than oh. um, I don't so, think anybody's complaining about that. No, no one's complaining about that. So we're, we're pleased with where we're at, but um, still looking to improve every game, um, clean up some mistakes, and just continue to get better. So speaking of getting better, I think a lot of people don't understand all the planning that goes into a week-to-week basis. So how can you, like, how do you prepare for a game? Okay, so how does that work? On the, the offensive end, um, you know, we get uh, trade films. I don't know if people realize that, but uh, teams trade films with each other. So we get three films, um, start to, to watch a team. Um, Coach Lindley, Coach Silverthorne, Coach Kreider, and I, um, we're all kind of on the offensive end. So start watching um, different positions, evaluating other teams' uh, players and their skill levels, um, enter a lot of data into our, um, into our film system, and then start to try and get some tendencies about how uh, teams defend certain formations that we would run, um, when they blitz, what they like to do, different field positions. Um, and then from there, we um, start to develop our game plan. And uh, we actually uh, got a really good idea from a, a powerhouse program in, in Oklahoma, the way they, they plan. And it's kind of a baseball um, analogy, which you'd like as a baseball guy. But uh, you know, what's like our fastball going to be out of a certain formation? Like, what do we love? Uh, you know, what's our curveball when they, you know, what can we like change up a little bit with emotion? 
uh, change up if they you know start to adjust how can we do that and then like there's the the strike them out like what's our our shot so we start to put that on paper uh, we look at the you know how do they defend this formation that we really like to run and uh, what what plays do we really like where can we attack and then start to formulate that and then from there you start to build your call sheet and uh, your first and ten calls that you like, your uh, your scripts. I like to to start with a certain script and get some. That was my next question. Yeah, right? we talk. We hear a lot about that on Sundays and Saturdays. Yeah. NFL, your first X number of plays, your yeah. first drive is scripted. Is that something that's happening here in high school? Level? Yeah. Um. So yeah, on on my call sheet, I'll have a a script that uh, I want to you know look at different formations, how they're going to adjust. Um, try and throw a couple motions in there. See early on. Um. Yeah. Uh, kind of an idea too is you always want to do something a little different, make the other team kind of second guess their scouting report on you, because obviously they've seen your film. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to make them kind of start to guess the scouting report a little bit. And uh, and then, you know, after that, you, you find something that you, you like. Our uh, our staff on, on Friday night does an awesome job. Uh, Coach Tucker's on our iPad on the sideline. Uh, Coach Silverthorne with our offensive line, and um, and they're they're watching. You know, we, we're blessed now in, in 2023 is you, you're watching the plays seconds after they happen and, and they're saying hey like inside zone uh, this is where this is where it's at and then you, you know that you start to get those go-to plays because um, the teams we play are, are, are really good uh, teams too they're well coached um, you know last couple weeks Metamora's had a great game plan Pekin's had a great game plan and they're they're trying to take away things that we like and uh, and you have to adapt and and our coaches and our players have done an awesome job of doing that. So speaking of kind of adapting in game players, like we have a really balanced approach this year, which isn't something that always happens in high school football. Sometimes it's like we have a stud running back or great offensive line. We're just going to hand the ball off. Yeah. Or sometimes you have a quarterback who can just throw. So what's it like this year having, you know, kind of a dynamic with Juhar, you know, some receivers on the outside yeah. with Juju and Preston, Preston Berg and then running the ball too. I yeah. mean, Sean, you have like unlimited options this so, year. It seems. So how does that go through? Like you're talking call sheets and you're talking in the motion. So how do you know like when to call a play and what's going to work, what's not going to yeah, work? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the funny thing is, is uh, last night I just saw uh, a quote from uh, Coach Mike Leach and uh, was talking about, you know, everyone thinks of balance as 50-50 run, 50-50, you know, 50-50 run, 50-50 pass. And uh, he's like, that's crazy. You know, true balance is if you can get the ball to five skill guys, um, Consistently, and, and and that's the goal. With you know, when we talk spread offense, is we want to spread the field. But if you're not using all those players, then then teams take that away. So um, definitely, as we design plays, we're trying to like, hey, how can we get Preston involved? How can we get Julian involved? How can we get GB and Clint involved? And, and get Sean in touches, and also make sure that he's not, you know, the Metamora game he carried it 37 times. That was not that was not on the script to to, to have Sean and carry it 37 it works, times. It, it's, and, but it's worked, at the right? end of the game, yeah, the goal is to is to get a win. So um, I think we've always in the in the past. Um, you know, our our goal is not. We've run the ball really well, and I, and I love to run the ball. And I know uh, Coach O'Neill does too. Uh, we really made you know as he came in and, and he and I first had conversations. You know, he loved how we ran the ball. One of the things he wanted to emphasize is getting the ball on the the edges a little bit more and using the, those perimeter guys. And even like as I looked in the off season, um, you know, one of our favorite screens we probably got eight or nine yards on last year. And I think we ran it 18 times in eight games. And I'm thinking to myself, why aren't we, why aren't we running this more? And so that's just a, a conscientious effort. Like, make those calls. How can we dress that screen up so we're still running it, but we're, we're keeping teams, um, you know, a little off balance. But just, you know, making sure that we're being intentional about calling that stuff, too. And, and getting the ball all around. Yep, so we're 5-0 playoff eligible. We still have some season left, though. Like right. Almost the whole half of the season. So what are some of the things that you're looking forward to in the second half? Um, yeah, honestly, and this sounds so cliche, but you know, it's just keep improving on, on what we're doing. Um, and we still we haven't made it through a game without a turnover yet. So, and that sounds we told our kids on Monday, you know, that sounds nitpicky, but we want to get better at that. There's a few wrinkles we're trying to work on um, as far as changing up our tempos. We like to go fast, but trying to get teams to be, um, you know, uh, look, catch them off guard, be a little herky jerky with our um, our. Uh, our tempo. Um, so we want to keep working on that. Obviously, I mean, homecoming, we're excited to play a homecoming game. Should be a great atmosphere. Um, we've got two home games in a row. And then, um, you know, every team in the middle line, it presents challenges. Every team plays hard. Um, and then, you know, Dunlap's playing well and Washington's playing well. And, um, 
I think it's going to be a really exciting finish in our conference. So it's just it's that continual improvement and, and just getting the most out of uh, our players and as coaches too, like working to the best of our abilities every week, and, and you know just uh, just not not being satisfied with where we're at, just keep improving. So awesome. Well, thank you for your time this thank morning, you, coach. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, you too. We'll be right back. Was he here right there, Ryan? I mean, really excited about all the different things, but he said the exact same thing you did, right? Start to look forward a little bit in how everything is going, but also try out new things. Like, it's an opportunity once you get at that little bit of lead, let's rent some new plays, new formations, and see what we can do and give some other guys a chance. Yeah, and, I th and again, I think that is important, and I think that's important also just because, you know, maybe that junior that's going to come in in the second half when you've got a lead is going to be one of your main guys next year as a senior, right? And, like, we, you know, you play, obviously, really, you hope you play really hard in practice every day, and that's obviously something we strive for. You hope you have productive freshman games, JV games, et cetera, but there's probably no substitute for varsity reps to get you ready for being a varsity player. So the, when those opportunities present themselves, I think it's really important to take it advantage of those have been take advantage we have so the potters hogs roll in 5 and 0 right here again uh, friday night limestone uh, 7 30 p.m carpet field nfh network if you do not want to deal with those crowds there will be lovely broadcasting brought to you by mort potter tv which is always a good time if you like us if you like everything the mcusd 709 district is doing please subscribe like share do whatever you can do, uh, Morton Potter TV right there. So, what other sports things we got going, Coach? Well, I mean, obviously, one that let's that, that we talk, you talked to Maddie Parrott last week, yeah. and so let's talk a little swimming and diving. Um, so, really good good week for the swimmers, divers out there. Ava Ray, our diver, sets a school record. Hey. Our two hundred, yeah, well done, well done there for Ava. Our two hundred medley that Maddie is on. She mentioned that last mm -hmm. week also sets a school record. So they keep rolling. They right? keep, keep rolling. Better. Yeah. They they have yeah. about a month, three weeks or so before they had their postseason. Yeah. So, obviously, keep going right. Right there, a reminder right there that it's a co-op with East Peoria and Washington. So, uh, lots of great athletes going through that. So, keep doing good job, swimmers. Uh, moving night, I think we had some nighttime tennis, right? Yeah, uh, tennis nights under the lights. I mean, again, tennis kids. I had a chance to talk to some of them. Uh, they number one, they were just really excited about everybody who came out to watch. Yeah. Right, and tennis is awesome. Yeah. Especially even more when you have all the lights coming down yeah. there at the Joel Stanfield Tennis Complex over there. Uh, great courts, great atmosphere. It was a great week in general for outdoor sports. Yeah, and I mean, you know, obviously tennis was really successful. Let's talk about soccer that also had a big event, right? They had their Give Hunger a Red Card game, raised a bunch of money for We Care, and won 9 to nothing. Scored a lot of goals, yeah. right? You know, maybe a little bit, I used to be our team that's down just a little bit there, but, you know, the Potters came out, rebounded a little bit off, maybe let's say, I think some of the players would say a little bit sluggish play over the weekend, a lot of games, not exactly. Um, Putting their best effort. Yeah, out there, I think I guess. it was tough. I you mean, know, we talked about it for the yeah. past couple weeks now. Scoring. Yeah. So, but come out, put nine up there. Kind of eliminate some of those headaches and not be able to score goals, right? Yeah, and I think one interesting thing about soccer is, you know, we we as baseball coaches have that mentality I think sometimes of you can play every day but I think it's really tough in soccer like last weekend when they have to play Friday and Saturday soccer isn't always the easiest back-to-back -back sport no, I mean, you're running five six yeah. seven miles in a game yeah yeah I, mean, I don't know about you but I don't think you run seven miles back-to-back -back right now no and so I think the thing is I think the couple days off right really rejuvenated that team and they come out fresh and energetic and then they put up nine against East Peoria yep so lots of great soccer games ready to go right there so if you want to find more about that go to 818.com you can see all of the morning soccer potters in action as well on mptv so yeah absolutely and so let's talk a little bit about volleyball now so they've continued to roll big game coming up next tuesday at metamora but obviously they've they've been playing really well yeah double digit wins again you know i think what are we 16 to 5 something like yeah. that rolling through the season but a big mental line game coming tuesday as we start to buckle down and try to i don't know solidify our place in the conference uh, and prepare ourselves for maybe a pretty deep postseason run. Yeah, I mean, I think one thing we'll do is we get a little closer to the postseason. We always like to break it down, kind of talk about where different teams' postseason path lies. You know, at this point, it's still kind of out there. You don't know exactly where you're going to go. So a lot could happen. Yeah, a lot could happen. But, I mean... But I think what's really what's really good is, like you mentioned, double-digit wins into the teens already. I mean, that's really, really impressive. Metamore is another really strong squad, so you get out there, and you, if you can get a win there, especially on the road at Tepke Gym, that would be a great moment for this squad to kind of solidify a lot of confidence. And one of the other things that's interesting about their schedule, they've got four straight away conference games. So the middle line of schedule just kind of, kind of was a little bit odd, I guess, maybe, in the way it was constructed this year. But, I mean, obviously this team's used to winning – away or at home. True, and that, it is what it is, right? And the schedule is yeah. just where it is. So, great weather this week, and we have one team that's starting to 
measure up to postseason when that's golf, right? So I know you had the opportunity to sit down and talk with one of our golfers, not even a senior or a junior yeah. golfer, but it's had kind of a very historic season in a weird ways, I guess is the best way to say that. So what's going on with our golf team? Yeah, so golf team, right, boys golf obviously won the Middle Illini Conference Tournament. Owen Adams won the individual side of that. And so I had a chance to talk with Owen. So let's go ahead and roll that interview. Back here on our MPTV Coaches Show, Ryan Lillian with one of our golfers, Owen Adams. And Owen, you're coming off a conference championship individually in the Middle Illini Conference yeah. Tournament. Just kind of talk about like that day, like going out there and eventually, when, number one, I guess my biggest question is like, when did you know you had this thing and you were going to have basically one of the best matches that you've played all year? Well, basically before we knew it was going to be a rainy day, it was going to be raining before and when we got there it was pouring rain and a few of us were on the range and we're like, this is this is going to be terrible. But then, uh, I mean, I stopped for a bit, we got out there, I was playing pretty good, I, I was, I birdied my first hole, I was like, okay, this might be, I'm feeling pretty good and then it kept just like stop raining for like a few seconds and it start raining again and it was pretty it was pretty miserable but i mean like our co coach king was saying you can't i mean everybody else is playing in the same conditions so i mean you just got to fight through it and um i was feeling pretty good and then through 11 holes i was one over and it started pouring rain and they called it off for a bit so we had to stop and go inside for an hour or two and you know i mean then they were talking about how they might cancel it and restart Monday and I was like no we can't do that so we were just waiting inside waiting out and just staying locked in still and uh I was so when we went back out I was still feeling pretty good I parred my first three holes and then I birdied my next hole to go uh even and then on my last hole of the day I had a chip and put it to like four feet for par and I actually uh flipped out for par so I uh, ended up going one over, but I felt pretty good. Even though it was a bad day, I had a pretty good day. And we still, we pulled in then our three scores, we had three eighties. So, I mean, we won by nine strokes. So we felt pretty good about that. Yeah, absolutely. And then obviously individually, you walk away with the title. Did, yeah. Let me, let me ask this question. Did you, were you done before the player who finished second? Do you know, or were you, were you trying to get a score to beat him as you were finishing? He was with, he was with my, our number one, Jacob, and um, when I walked over, it, Jacob's Jacob's dad actually came to me before my last hole and asked me what I was at, and I told him. So they knew, and this kid was had shot a 74, so I basically just needed to get a bogey or better. Oh, okay. And so I I didn't know that till after, but then people were pretty shocked. They didn't think a 73 was coming out that day, but... It felt pretty good to shoot that. Awesome. Well, congrats on that. Let's talk about kind of what's upcoming, obviously, as you roll deeper into the postseason. So just kind of talk about, obviously, rolling in, obviously, into, like, regionals and then kind of, like, what your team's expectations are, what your expectations are, all that kind of stuff. Uh, definitely for regionals, we want to advance as a team, the top three teams to make it. Um, so, I mean, tomorrow, it's tomorrow. We're looking to just go out and put good scores down because – Usually regional scores are a bit higher because kids are trying to just play super well, but you just need to go out there and play your game. And we're hoping to be one of those top three teams. If not, hopefully one would be nice, but uh, hopefully everybody on our team advances and we're just looking to go out there and get four good scores. and shoot a pretty good score. Awesome. And then let's talk just kind of individual highlights for this year. One thing we got to talk about is hole in one. Yeah. So uh, talk a little bit about that experience. Uh, well, basically we didn't know it, but we showed up one day to Pine Lakes and somebody said, that's Tommy Cool sitting in his car. <laughs> so we figured the coach got him to come out and talk to us. And uh, so he came and talked to us for a bit and then we were teeing off and he actually teed off with one group and he was playing with us for a bit. And then uh, hole five, he was playing with another kid, and they then they were on hole six's tee box, and uh, I hit a perfect shot, and it bounced once, went to the left a bit, and then rolled in, and I basically just like dropped my club and took off running, and then Tommy walked over from six's tee box, and uh, he was there to like give me a high five and stuff, and. It, it was a pretty cool moment, but I was pretty shocked at the moment. And then I got a few pictures with them. And then after that, I just quit. I was done for the day. I just walked off and went home and then went into the next day feeling pretty good. So, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I would imagine so. And then last question before we let you go here. Just kind of, I mean, obviously that's a huge individual moment for you. Is there a team moment that kind of highlights this year? Uh, I mean, definitely the conference win. That was a pretty big one. We just, going into that, uh, Pekin was in the lead and we needed them to get third or worse. And uh, I think they either got third or fourth, but that was pretty big and we were pretty excited about that. But also the first conference match of the year, we had a big win over Washington and Pekin. And after that, we kind of, uh, I mean, that was a pretty big moment. But after that, we kind of went down downhill for a bit and ended up going three and four in conference. So we had a losing record. But the com winning the conference championship was definitely something to pick us up and something to look forward to going into regionals and sectionals. Awesome. Well, congrats on that. Congrats Thank on the individual success. And folks, stick around. We'll be back right after this. Honestly, I think that was really cool just to hear from Owen. I mean, you know, and, and it's funny, it, I don't know if it made the interview, but as we were walking out, he, you know, I made a joke about, hey, you know, you're going to get some great weather for regionals. And he just kind of laughed and said, maybe the rain's my favorite way to play now. And so the 73 conference championship in the rain, like pretty impressive right there. Yeah, very hats off to our boys golfers. They followed that up with another great match uh, right after that on Saturday. So uh, they're heading into their postseason this week. So, I mean, they are rocking and rolling. Great job to our boys golf team as they continue to go and uh, as you said Owen is like let's make it rain some more yeah. so, but it's going to be great weather maybe a little hot actually but yeah. we'll work from there and the last thing we got to talk about is cross country yeah I mean cross country obviously continues to be successful right I mean over the weekend boys win win girls finish second um, a ton of individuals in the top 10 on both sides so it's almost like we're a broken record yeah right? it's the same thing over and over again yeah. same couple guys as we talked about coach Zilla a couple weeks ago right <laughs> all trying to get them finished right as a group together uh, and they're doing what they got to do on the boys and the girls side so that's a positive yeah and one of the things i know coach Zeller mentioned and you know on the girls side is trying to get to full strength and that's still kind of a work in progress but you think about it right coach Zeller feels like they they haven't hit their stride yet and they're still finishing second it, you know I, I think what you you're, you're very likely to see both the boys and girls speaking of postseason make a good run in cross country and we love our postseason runs so coach Zeller, you got anything left oh uh, let's do this let's circle back a little bit Right, we started this show talking about some football. We're going to run a few highlights from last week's Peking game, and then we'll talk about that, and then we'll wrap this thing up. Already week five of the football season, and the Potters looking to move to 5-0 and at Peak and Jude Hart with the keeper. He's going to go down the sidelines for a Potters touchdown. This was early in the game. Potters off to a great start. We move ahead a little bit. Potters scored on a Brett Michael five-yard TD run, and here they go for two out of the swinging gate formation. Shondon Buffington finds Julian Alexander. Two points for the Potters. Second consecutive week for the Potters with a pick six. This is Silas Steffen stepping in front of a ball and returning it into the end zone for a Potters touchdown. A couple deep balls in this game. Here's one of them. Jude Hart at QB finds Preston Berg down the sideline for a 40-yard gain. This one doesn't get in the end zone, but one would later. Jude Hart got into the end zone one more time toward the end of the game, adding his second rushing touchdown of the night. Once again, fakes, keeps and will jump into the end zone and off of your screen, but the Potters win. They're 5-0. Well, as you can see there, Friday night under the lights, football, great to walk away with a big victory over a rival, per yeah. se. Yeah. So I what are our final thoughts? You know, I mean, I, again, I just want to, from the football standpoint, uh, one thing I made note of in the highlights, but I want to mention it again, is interception every game this week, or excuse me, every game this year so far, Potters have had at least one interception. Uh, that's, I mean, kind of a historic run, really. Well, we got we got to keep it going, though. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, we're going to go with some teams that don't like to pass the ball, and then we're going to go with this team that really likes to pass the ball. <laughs> so maybe we get one per game? Yeah, I mean, it'd be cool to kind of continue that. I mean, and I, you know, if you win the turnover battle, statistically, you're more likely to win the game mm -hmm. and so obviously we're taking the ball away we've done a pretty good job taking care of the ball ourselves so again just signs of of positives that we want to continue to build on in the next few weeks yeah and speaking of building on it one last plug if you want to come out watch that football game tonight carpet field or tomorrow night 7 30 p.m or on the nfhs network you can subscribe like share uh tomorrow potter tv on youtube um, but for ryan lindley i'm eric myers until next week thanks